Hello, everyone. Welcome to Green Dudes. Uh, I am the host of this podcast. My name is Connor Mack. I'm here with my uh, my good buddy, pal, um, perpetual guest, sometimes co-host, uh, Connor Kelly. Uh, Connor, hey, what's up? Uh, you know... I'm doing all right, man. I, I think that there is a, a title that you left out there when you were introducing me. Oh, yeah. And it's also lifelong uh, Green Day comrade. Yes. You thank, and I. Thank you. you know? that, that, that's an essential title, I think. Because uh, that is the truth. That is the truth, and that is the story of us. We are lifelong Green Day comrades. Um, Green Day brothers in arms, if you will. Uh, it's been a long journey, almost. Let's see. We've known each other for 22 years. We've been into Green Day for almost. Wow. We've been into Green Day for almost as long, like a, maybe maybe 20 years of Green Day. And us. Yeah. Well, so, maybe, I guess we could say it's 2023, so we could safely say 19 years. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because uh, 2004 is when the bomb dropped. You know. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, that, that, that's when everything changed for us forever. Uh, our lives were never the same. And, you know, that, that is a story to tell. That, that is a story that we have to tell. Um, and we are going to tell it, but not all at once. Um, because this podcast, we will be uh, going song by song through Green Day's vast and varied catalog. Um, and, you know... I, I think there's there's plenty to talk about in in each song. They're all a part of our uh, of our journey, um, and so I think through throughout the discography and us us chatting away about it, I think uh, I think we'll also be telling the listeners our story. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. And you know, for as long as you and I have been listening to Green Day. I'm really excited to start at the beginning. Um, as they say in Dune, you know, uh, the beginning is a delicate time. And uh, for, for as much as I have listened to Green Day over the years, and let me reassure our listenership, I have listened to them a fucking lot. Um, 39 Smooth in some ways feels like like I would not go so far to say any part of discography of uh, Green Day's discography is a blind spot but uh I I have some of the least amount of experience starting here and I I, I wanted to admit that off the bat too like a, after we got into Green Day through American Idiot um you know it'll be kind of fun to talk about how we like slowly unraveled their discography. Cause there's a story in that too, you know, yes, like exactly. it, it was not, it was not just a, a straight shot. And I feel like by the time I got to 39 smooth and the times that I have revisited it throughout my life, um, I'm really excited to like start at the proper beginning because, uh, I think that there's a lot there that I haven't given as much thought to, Whereas I, I very much have to later parts of their yeah. discography. Yeah, that's an awesome point because, um, you know, kids these days might not know. They might not know that back in the day when you got into a band, um, you know, you wanted to consume everything you could get your grubby little paws on, you know. But it wasn't so easy as firing up the old Spotify machine and nah. saying, hey, I'm going to listen to all this music on shuffle and uh which is sickening to me but that's it's how it's tr- it's actually it really funny to think about we did not have that access no, nothing about our exposure to green day was immediate so, no no <laughs> it's so, true. so we got one cd at a time usually and and it was all kind of uh, luck and uh whenever our parents would take us to the mall or or to the to the cd store cuz there was yeah, there there were music stores that sold cd's back then mm. um we we looked through the uh, the shelves, and maybe maybe that was the day we were lucky and found a copy of Insomniac. You know, maybe that right. was the day. Um, and so, yeah, we we have all those moments, and a lot of them were together. You know, um, so yeah, that that's all that's all in there. Um, but yeah, it's a very different thing these days than like I I mean, 
I don't know. It, that just doesn't exist anymore. It is. It, it's uh, no. And because that's even before, like, like all those albums were not even on YouTube yet. I don't think. Like, it's not. Did YouTube didn't exist? It was, that was like like right and, before it. Yeah, I think I think when we first started, if YouTube did exist, it was not at a point where you could just type in whatever you wanted and it yeah. would be there. Yeah. So. Um, Without doing any, like, research on that prior to this, I, I really don't know. But, I mean, like, at, at that time, it's like, even if it was around, like, would we have even known to look for it? You know, this yeah. was like the Wild West. Exactly, you know, we yeah, just had no yeah. fucking clue. Yeah. So, I mean, very different times. Uh, and it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. I can't even think of a world without YouTube. But, like, it's just such an insane thing to conceive of. Yeah. No, I mean, I... um. Uh, depending on your your uh, age range, you know, like you're either thinking like, "Wow, you guys are old as fuck," or you're like, "Wow, you guys are like young as fuck." Like, yeah, <laughs> really, is I that know. like the scope of your yeah, your right? understanding? Like, yeah. like the Green Day fan base is is so large too that um, I feel like we, we could be on either end of like yeah. people being like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" You Some know, of those motherfuckers can't even work YouTube. You know, but but yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> got their glasses true. on and they're just but. But I think for for those Green Day fans who are within like our age range, like this is probably a pretty familiar story too. Like I, I think that there is a lot of like creating this tapestry, you know, as as time goes on, you know, because it, it was a very strange point. Like we we truly did live in a kind of transition point of like, you know, the formation of what we understand as like the modern internet and and how that impacts like music listenership and dissemination today. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It is interesting, and I I, I want to make this point very clear, um, so all of our listeners can you know can sink into their skulls that uh, kids these days, you know, you can't be a real fan going on TikTok and 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 watching <laughs> TikTok videos of Holiday where they do a choreographed dance. You know, you're not a real Green Day fan. We will gatekeep. We will be. Uh, we're, we're we're kind of like the rule the the ruling elite of the Green Day yeah. fandom. You know, um, the the best way to grow a fan base is to tell the youngest generation to just go fuck themselves. Yeah, I you mean, know, then, <laughs> you know, it's just like they keep on coming back for more, and it's you know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's it's like a um, what's the word? What's that word for it? Um, it's like like musical negging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which okay, so um, that that was a, a a joke. Green dudes is welcoming of all Green Day fans. Um, even if you just listen to to one song or you heard heard a chorus on the radio, you know, like that's like y- you know, listen to our podcast. Or, or even if you're doing a even if you're doing a dance to holiday on TikTok. Hell yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. This. Yeah. <laughs> Just a just a quick taste of the dry humor that you'll experience on this podcast. So yeah, and you know, buckle up. You know, if you, if if you don't like it, you can fuck right off. That's also the dry humor there. He doesn't mean that. There we go. That's a bit more of the dry humor there. So that that was a test. So and you all passed. If you're still listening, you all passed. <laughs> yeah. You are in the gang, um, Connor. But before we dive into um, the first song that we're going to cover. Uh, Mm -hmm. and all that comes with it. I have one simple thing to ask you. So on, on this show, as most podcasts do, they, they, they have a theme song that they play every, the beginning of every episode, you know? And so, yeah, most podcasts, most podcasts. So this, this one is, it's no different to the others in that regard. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I, it's it it takes teamwork too to uh to, right. to perform a song um so i i i just have one simple task for you to to do for me if you can be so obliged mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so what i need you to do is i need you to hum the uh the iconic guitar part from american idiot just over and over again <laughs> Green dudes. Green dudes. Green dudes. Green dudes. All right. All right. Hey, pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. See. So that's probably probably sounds great. 
yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't even think the lag was an issue this time. It sounded, you know, on on my end, it was it was good. So nice, um, nice, love it. Love I it. and I think I think the I, th- I think the fans are going to eat that up too. That, I mean, like, I don't want to say we're pandering, but, like, we know our listenership, right? Yeah, I mean, like, we, we know. <laughs> we know. We, we know, know what you love, guys are here for. They Come love on. That fucking riff, man. Come now, on. Talking of TikTok videos, how many fucking yeah. TikTok videos is You've that? You've heard that on TikTok. Yeah. Come on. Um, Come on. Okay, so we start at the beginning, but not the very beginning. Here's something that, uh, that I, you know, I do want to um, say before we get into this is. Uh, the first song that we're covering, the song we're talking about today, is At the Library. And that is the first song off of Green Day's first record, 39 Smooth, as you may or may not know. Um, but they did put out two EPs before the release of this record. Um, and this is something that Connor and I talked about. We, we had to get this squared away. It's very important uh, to, 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 yeah. to you know, do right by Green Day in, in telling the, the, the story, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, they put out the Slap EP and the 1000 Hours EP before putting out this album. But I think it makes more sense this way because as most Green Day fans of, of our age or younger, most consumed... Uh, this album as as um, 1039 smoothed out slappy hours which is the combination of 39 smooth and those two EPs um, and so while we'll acknowledge that those EPs came first I think it makes more sense to cover uh, you know 1039 smoothed out slappy hours um, as the first album just because that's how that's how I discovered it um, that's right. how you discovered it um, I think that's how it's still commonly listened to. Yeah, I I think that is completely fair. It's worth having the footnote there, but um, to do it any other way would just feel like uh, you know changing changing what feels like the most natural chorus for the sake of like a technicality. And it's yeah. like you know, come on, guys, we we all know why we're here, you know. So exactly, let's do it. Hell fucking yeah. Um, so, at the library, as I mentioned, it's the first track on uh, on 39 Smooth. And, I, I mean, I I listened to it about five or six times today. We listened to it together before pressing record. Um, Connor, when, when do you think... When was the last time you think you listened to this song? Uh, not counting when I also listened to it earlier today in preparation for this discussion. Um, it's really hard to say, because I, I kind of already mentioned, like, I, hey, like, I don't go back to this album as as often as others. And, like, sometimes, like, you know, truthfully, that can mean years, you know? Uh, so, like, when, when was the last time? You know, I, I have to say, like, every now and then, if I don't know what to do, like what to listen to, I will put Green Day's discography on shuffle. So it's like, who's to say when when the last time was? But deliberately, maybe like two years ago, man. That might sound crazy, but that's just the honest truth. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think it's um dissimilar to to me. Like, yeah, like every now and then, I, yeah, maybe every couple of years, I'll be like, wait, let, I'll just put on 39 Smooth and... I, I am an annoying fan that like when I listen to this album um, for my like personal pleasure, uh, I do just listen to Thirty Nine Smooth and I listen to the EP separately because I'm a I'm an I'm an insane person. I I am an insane Green Day fan that like I you know um, it, it's what I do because it's it it it's it makes me feel good about myself to listen to it that right. way. You know, I feel better than everyone else. You just know better, you know? I, I mean, that's just, it's true. Everyone. It's just true, you know? Um, so, so yeah, uh, going through this way will be interesting. Um, and I, I think, uh, I mean, I, 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 I think it's, it's just, a something that blows me away every time I fucking put it on is that this song was the first song off of their debut album. Yeah. Like, obviously we've mentioned that before, but just like, think about, it's just, it's a crazy first song. It's, it's a 
think about how many of the the raw materials are there at the start. No, exactly. And you know what is funny? As I was listening to this, it for for the exact reasons you just mentioned, it kind of made me think about the song Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath off of their debut album Black Sabbath. Yeah, baby. because that first song it it's it's exactly that same feeling. It's like it's it's the fucking roadmap for everything else. Like all all the most important components, you know, except for Trey Cool. You know, they're all there. And it, it feels like kind of like a Rosetta Stone almost for being like, you know, you know, what what's going on with Green Day? Like so much of what drives their songwriting and their style is present here in a way that feels like the big bang you know it's just like the creation of the fucking universe and and everything that you need except for trey cool is all right there you know so um i'm I'm right there with you because i coming back to the song and and thinking about it in a way that i usually don't i I don't usually visit the song as like oh wow like the beginning of green Day's discography i'm not usually in that mindset but coming into this discussion that was the frame of mind I was in. And it does feel like there's a lot to dig into here. There's there's like some really strong components to what makes Green Day Green Day in in the very opening moments of this track. And it's it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. No, you you, you said it very well. Um Yeah, I I and I, I do appreciate your caveat too. It's it's all there except for Drake Cool. That's uh I mean it's kind of crazy the, the 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 first like what 13 or or maybe even like 16 i forget how many songs are on this compilation but but the first chunk of these these episodes we're recording are going to be trayless yeah isn't that weird <laughs> yeah we're not gonna be able to talk about trey um until a little bit later on it is it, it it's it's very weird and uh as as a long time Green Day fan, it's like that's that's probably the the thing that separates this album from the rest the most, apart from the production quality, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, you you go right into that 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 riff, which is now like, I mean, it's it's, it's like so it's, good. it's so good. It's it's a it's it's one. It's the first of of many iconic riffs, I think that. Um, and, and this one personally is iconic for the Green Day fans. It's, you know, just it, with, with it being the first song on the first album, it's, it's, um, ah, oh man, I, I don't know. It just, it just gets you right away. Um, and one thing, yeah. That, and, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say like, cause you get the opening riff, but then like, there's like that little like guitar lick before like the vocals, like, you know, so, and then it's just like, it fucking explodes. Know, like, yeah. And that's one of the things I was going to bring up too is, is, um, you know, Billy's guitar work on this album, um, in its totality as well. But, but on this song, it's like really interesting because those are like, that's like pinch harmonic stuff like that. He's, you know, that, that like little guitar part There's like, it's, there's like weird shit he does on this album that he doesn't really do on any other album. Um, and so, I mean, it's it's interesting you know it's like stylistically he maybe hasn't like refined his style entirely um and like most guitarists that would be like oh they're they're just playing basic stuff or they're not shredding or they're like like they're limiting themselves but with billy joe it's the reverse like he he does a lot of different like stuff that's like as as a bad guitarist i can say like it's hard hard to do for uh, for me a bad guitarist um yeah and uh and then he reins himself in on forthcoming albums to a large degree not entirely but um so yeah like right away where we, we we kind of like see the scope of his guitar playing um and then there's all these like these these noodly bits in the power chords too like it's it's uh it it it's ah man um that's another trick that I think he uses throughout this record and a little bit on um on Kerplunk that uh we don't really see a lot um afterwards. What are your thoughts, Connor, on on like the the skill that kind of he shows out the gate and then kind of bring it back home for, you know, their their breakout and kind of 
Right. No, I think that's that's all true, and it's it is funny to think about how like as Billy develops as a songwriter and kind of like honing his his craft, not just like like songwriter in his lyricism, but in his playing too, right? Um, you like I, I think the maybe like the knee jerk reaction would be to go like oh you know it becomes more simplistic, and it's funny because that's a common critique on Mike's bass playing too. That yes, I think we'll probably true. also dive into. Everyone loves to fucking talk about no one knows, and they'll be like, "Wow, Mike's never played a, a, a bass riff as good as no one knows." You know, for the rest of their fucking discography, and it's like there. I mean, there's a conversation to be had there too. But like, I, I I like what you're saying because the framing here is like, you know, hey, these choices are deliberate. They're <laughs> they're fucking <laughs> <I do that laughs> deliberate. <laughs> Damn. Just okay. For, wow. For, for listeners at home, that's the second time he's done that this week. It's <laughs> the second time he's made that mispronunciation. This Isn't week. that insane? <laughs> I mean, you just have to know that. Oh my and god! Both, both times on a podcast. <laughs> that's that's like. Oh my god. Okay. I mean, shout out to Chad for Chums. You got to go listen to that too. Yeah. But like, it's, wow. It's, it's that's great when it happens on that one. Wow. Um. Holy shit. Let's just regain our composure here for a moment. Uh, for those uh, coming into the podcast, uh, new to us, if you're jumping on with Green Dudes, um, uh, you know, I, I usually have a drink with me, too, when I'm when I'm podcasting. It's the way I like the podcast. Feels just, like I yeah, kind of... <laughs> things just happen. It's, you know? I just, you know, you just roll with it a little bit, but that's why, you know, so... Yeah. There's a reason for it. But, uh, but no, but, like, so they're making decisions, um... To say like, hey, we are gonna refine our songwriting. You know, like we're we're gonna in, in a way like you could look at it as like this is more simplistic playing, but it's like no, like you're cutting out the extraneous parts. And um, I don't know, I, I I do have a lot of respect for like the way that they grew from those decisions moving on and obviously we're gonna have so much to talk about in that regard. And then like at the same time, like it is really fun to come back here and feel like you know, Billy probably feels like he has a lot to prove. You know, it's like, this is your first record. Like, why wouldn't you want to show off a bit about, like, what you can do? You know, if this is, at the time, like, if this is, like, the ceiling for what you can play, then why wouldn't you put that on there? You know, it's like, you might only have one shot to be like, this is who I am as a guitar player and as a songwriter and as an artist. And so, like, those flourishes, I think, represent, like, you know, more than just like a young hotshot showing off. It's like, you don't know where any of this is going to go. It's so easy to look backwards at the Green Day discography and be like, well, you know, oh, I can see how it grew from there. But think about if there's only one part to it at all. It's like, there's no guarantee you get anything else after this. And so um, I, I think that those moments on the album are like really vital because I, I kind of get the feeling that they're really trying to like show like, hey, this is what we can do, you know, like we're Green Day, this is this is where we are at, you know, as musicians. So like, yeah. what do you think, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's a absolutely right, and it's a great uh, point that I, I hadn't thought of, you know, because obviously they at this point they they weren't like, oh, this band is go definitely going to make fucking sixteen albums or how many ever they they've they've made or. Uh, um yeah it this this could be a one and done kind of thing and obviously coming up in their scene like a lot of those bands put out an ep or two and then they go away uh, you know they put out an album and tour and then they're done so yeah like longevity i don't think was the norm um within that scene either so that's a that's a really great point it's like why not kind of show show everything i can do um and obviously too it's like a thing it, it it makes me wonder like how like what the reactions in the Gilman scene were like too with with kind of the like you know guitar solo kind of things because you know a big part of them getting into that community is like were they punk enough some people thought they yeah. were not punk enough you know it's like guitar solos i think for a long time were like kind of um you know too cliche for for punk mm -hmm. rock um 
so even like within their own scene they're like rebelling you know like like it, it's it's kind of like they're rebelling in that way within this this scene of like these kind of more closed-minded jaded punks that just think that music is lame then when they become mainstream they're kind of like reversing that and rebelling in a way where like you know uh, you know kind of against the classic rock solos you hear on the radio or that they're being played with you know right. so that's kind of i don't know it's it's interesting no that i think that's another like great point it's like isn't it funny that you know the the thing that green day definitely gets the most flack for i think even to this day is are they punk enough and to think about like the the time of when they were making even 39 smooth you can make an argument that like the most punk thing they could do was to not make punk music because to make punk music would have been to fit into the mold of the same musicians making music around them yeah it's kind of like a hilarious commentary you know and i I'm not going to sit here and say, like, oh, yeah, like, that's what Green Day was trying to do. Like, they they were even trying to break apart from their own scene, you know, like, but, um, but I, I do think that there's something to be said that, and I think that this is going to be a big sticking point for you and I, something that we come back to, something that you and I have talked to, uh, or, or talked about, rather, for all of those many years that we, we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast that you and I have been friends, and you and I have been Green Day comrades in arms, the most punk thing that Green Day can do is make the music that they want to make, you know? And whether it's deliberate, it, that's an intentional one there for you. <laughs> just, to, just to have that's the dry humor that you can expect to hear on Green Dudes right here. So that's all, having a little bit of fun there. Um, but, but whether it's deliberate or not, you know, it's like, oh, are they trying to make a statement about, like, you know, rebelling against the own, their own punk scene at the time? It's like, who cares, you know? Because I don't think they were asking themselves that question. I think the question they were asking themselves is, what kind of music do we want to make, you know? And it's like, fuck the reaction. Fuck whatever anyone else is going to think. Even though, of course, like, you got to be concerned about that on some level, right? Like, I think Billy's talked about that, too. But, but, but to go ahead with it anyways, you know, to make the music that you want to make in spite of that, I think that's that's like the true punk energy that has always drawn us to green day and, you know, keeps us sticking around even now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, it has always boiled down to, uh, yeah, we're going to do what we want. Fuck everyone else. Um, and, uh, I, I do think it's, it's, uh, it, it, it does start that way as well. You know, I think you're right. I think that's kind of what these songs, are in a way and um yeah i, th- I think it's that, that that definitely will be a theme that we we uh run into quite a bit um for better or for worse going forward um you know connor take me back to to you know your your tweenhood here the first time you yeah. press play on this on this song as you know what like a 12 year old boy or 13 year old boy um, yeah, something like that. And uh, I mean, it's it's just one of those things where it's one of those songs where you know it it takes you back to that um, to that time in your life, and yeah. you know you you can kind of uh, like feel how it felt back then, um, being being a uh, uh, just a little guy, <laughs> just a little, you know. Oh my god. No, you're so right. A preteen no, you're or tween. So, you're so right. That's, you know, part of, you know, they really capture like lightning in a bottle or, or I don't know, even more than that, you know, it's like, it does feel like that essence just runs throughout this song, throughout this record. Um, whether that's, you know, thinking back to when I first listened to it, you know, maybe it's all intertwined, but I cannot say I remember like my first instance of listening to this song. It's one of those songs that, I mean, a lot of Green Day's discography for, uh, for us, I think, 
Um, well, I don't know if I should say for us. It'd be interesting to talk to you about it. But like for me, like sometimes it feels like it's always been there. You know, it feels like the way that I I think about Star Wars sometimes. Not to bring that into this discussion here too. Here but go. like, I, but that's I'm another that's another but, running theme. But, <laughs> but no, no. But I'm saying it because for as much as I love Star Wars, I can't remember the first time I watched it. There, there, there are barely any even memories I have from like before that moment. It just feels like it's always somehow been like wrapped up in my experience. That's what Green Day feels like a lot of the times too. Like I don't, I, I would l if you could tell me the first time you listen to this song, dude, I'm gonna be fucking enthralled because I cannot tell you. I have no fucking clue when the first time I would have listened to this song was. I, I, I can't remember it. It feels like it's just air. Like I've just, it's been there, you know? I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I am in the same boat for sure. I, I don't really remember life before it all that well. Um, and no, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, like as far as my adult or, you know, conscious life, it's always kind of been, it's been a song. Um, and no, I don't remember the first time I hit play, but, what I do remember, and and this this really is the story of of all of these songs on on uh, Thirty Nine Smooth and Kerplunk. Uh, you're just kind of a boy pining after a girl. You're just a dumb, you know, yes. twelve year old, and you and, and and you know you're crushing hard, and uh, you know, Billy Billy <laughs> Billy saw us, you know, yeah. And um, just he, he really did a great job at writing about um, young love on this record. Yeah, you know, something tells me he may have experienced it himself, too. Maybe so. Maybe so. As, as uh, you know, being... Oh, and, and then the cool thing, too, was about growing up and listening to these lyrics. It's It's not like, you know... We're we're in the throes of of romantic drama or whatever. It's it's like we're like little kids. Like we're like one day, one day those will be our problems. You know, like yeah. thinking about yeah. it like oh man, that's gonna when when my heart's broken, <laughs> that's gonna I know. That's gonna, I'm gonna listen to this song all the time. It's gonna be so crazy. I know. You're we're, like we're just on like the cusp of adolescence. Yeah. You know, like yeah. just just for the first time, are we like riding that wave as as we are being introduced to this music and uh i don't know i can't think of a better time or a better place or or a better uh discography to be like hey yeah. here you go you know like we Absolutely. i mean uh it, it it feels like it all lined up in a way where um you know i don't it's funny because like i don't know if it's like helpful in any way it feels like it's commiserating with you you know it's yes. like yeah doesn't it like fucking suck to like you know you're just like somewhere and you see like this like beautiful girl and like you want to say something to her and then like not only does she leave but like she's just clearly with someone else and you're just like oh you know i, I really am like the biggest fucking loser on the planet like that's that's the song you that's know the song, like, i know yeah yeah um yeah and and it's obvious but that yeah that that's all that's all that happens within the song but like the i guess we can dive into the lyrics um sure sure because yeah they're they're cute and they're innocent and um yeah they they evoke the feelings that you know that that you felt in 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 such like a such a minor interaction you know it's it's uh, exactly exactly and it makes up a whole song it's it's uh i i don't know it's 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 remarkable i guess and it's it's just like yeah like one of those minor interactions that you think about for like the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you know, and, and 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 it's funny. It's actually you know talking about it now, talking about it out loud. Like you know, it it makes me think. Like we know that people are still having these experiences, and people will still have these experiences for the end of time. You know, but like th this, I don't know if this is gonna feel like a stretch or not. But I gotta say, I've just been struck by this thought but have you ever seen like uh like those memes where it'll be like wow miss universe 
or a McDonald's cashier. You know what I'm talking about? And it's like, on the face of it, it's like, yeah, you know, it, it's fucking stupid. You know, it's making a fucking stupid point, the meme is. But that comes from a place of, like, recognizing, like, this this beauty in the mundanity of everyday life. You could go anywhere, um, especially this time of your life, especially as an adolescent, as, as you're going, as you're going through adolescence. And it's like, yeah. you know, even, even the most boring mundane experiences can suddenly take on this strange life of their own because it's like, you are realizing things in a new light for the first time, you know? And it's like, wow, you know, you're just at the fucking library and you see this beautiful girl and suddenly it's like these feelings are elicited in you and, you know, what do you do? You have a desire to react, but you have no experience. You have no understanding of how to handle any of these emotions. There's just no fucking roadmap and then nothing happens. You know, you're just like a fucking idiot at the end of the day, still trying to figure this shit out. It, this might be the first time and you have no fucking clue about what to do. And then it's done, you know? And it, it is. It's it's such an encapsulation of a very specific, but like, um, but like very, uh, like well, like shared moment between many people like that's a common experience yes a- among yeah. people of that age group you know it's like absolutely it, it's just a part of growing up i i i was you know having crushes walking into the supermarket at the airport at, at um the, yeah at mcdonald's you know everywhere everywhere and um so yeah it's 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 just a really brilliant kind of um uh, song about it. such a simple thing um, and going back to what, what you were saying earlier about kind of um, this this all kind of happening for us at this pivotal time obviously the, these these lyrics do kind of speak to to uh, a very young and innocent kind of um, time for you know for the narrator but uh, it's 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 funny because because Green Day really what they did is is they like opened a door for us into adulthood you know, or or into the kind of person that we wanted to be. Um, yeah. And uh, and, and it's it's funny because, you know, it, at at the opposites at the opposite ends of their discography when we were getting into them, um, the, you know the the lyrical content is like very very different. Um, so, so I think it's going to be really fun, interesting to like get to those lyrics down the line with American Idiot or Warning and being like, well, as a 12 year old, like, how did I interpret that? Like, like, like what was, you know, what did I think of that? Like, you know, what did that tell me about the world or myself? Um, because yeah. here at the beginning, like we're, we're kind of down to the, like the base emotions and kind of, um, uh, trials of youth and obviously as we get later on in their discography it kind of it the, the scope expands drastically and and there's a lot of twists and turns along the way so um i don't Definitely. know just kind of fun thinking about our former yeah. selves um, yeah and, and and i can tell you that like the a lot of the thoughts i'm sharing now you know they're reflections on how how i'm looking at it you know today as <clears throat> a 31 year old guy, you Man know, of a certain age. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, it's funny to think back on what, like, Oh, how would I have interpreted the song at that time? You know what my like enduring memory is? It's it, nothing remarkable, but I remember I always took this song lyrically as it's so dumb to say this as like um a boy seeing a girl like at a party you know like they're at like a house party or something like that's what the lyrics always made me, made me think of i never even like thought about the song title being <laughs> at the, i'm not kidding the song is called at the library it's like where does the song take place oh connor God. probably at the fucking library <laughs> but like just listening to the lyrics, it's like I oh like talking about like that idea 
those past ideas of the future, if you will. You know, like uh, when Hostage you're younger. Hostage reference. And there we go. We are, we're going with it. But like when you're younger, you're thinking about yourself when you're older. And like it's such a good point to touch on that like music is so often a gateway into in what feels like that like future projection of yourself. What I can definitely say is I remember being younger and listening to this song and thinking like these people are at like a house party, you know, staring across the room. Are you leaving soon? You know? And you want to, like, drum up the, the you want to summon the courage to talk to this girl. You know, it's like uh, amongst this throng of people, you know, that you imagine, whatever. Yeah, oops, you're in middle school or high, who fucking cares? It's like I had no concept of this shit anyways. Again, um, and so, so like, that's, that's my, like, enduring memory of it. And then, like, you know, you, you listen to it now it's more in line of the conversation we're having today. It's like, well, they're just at the fucking library. There is actually no, there's no more drama to it than that, which makes me appreciate the song more. But that's how I thought about it back then. I was like, fuck the song title. Like, it, it felt like it was a song that sort of represented, you know, being being in like more dramatic places and wanting to approach a girl and just, you know, be like, yeah, I'm going to be that person who's able to just tell him how I feel, you know? But, you know, even the song ends where it just doesn't happen. You know, talk about, like, having having something that gives you a roadmap of how you're going to be in the future. It's like, I've never become that person, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, and, and it's like, was it like a, uh, was it was it a prophecy that Green Day right. threw upon us? <laughs> <laughs> did, right. did, did we ultimately become losers because yeah. of Green Day? I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's like what came first, chicken or the egg? I don't know. It's like, I know, I know. Um, but yeah, no, you're yeah, you're 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 right, and and I think actually that's kind of what I was trying to get at earlier is is that yeah, it it th- th- these are past ideas of the future, right? Yeah, it's it like they they really kind of inform or I don't know, make you think about the the future you when or like in a way that maybe you hadn't before. Um, and so it kind of like pulls on all these thoughts of like your identity and who you are. Um, and then kind of like, how do I want to form myself? Like, Oh, like I actually have the choice to, to be this person. And this is a very, obviously there's much more, um, much, much of green days later material is definitely more relevant in that, um, respect for us, I guess at least. But, um, but it's funny that those thoughts are kind of already percolating in, in like the, their, the first song. Um, yeah. And obviously it's, it's, it's kind of a showcase of, like we said before, what the band does best. And every time I put on, um, 39 smooth, I, I, you know, y- you can't help but be struck by, uh, like Mike's harmonies that are so mm-hmm. prevalent. Um, and this is a great example of that. Um, another thing that, you know, we, we, you know, we, we yearn for these days. Um, and right away as, as well, uh, Billy Joe's voice is, is he, he sounds so young. Yeah, he does. He does. It's just funny. It's like, he absolutely sounds like young Billy. Like, you know, there's no question about it. But just like the song too, it's like so much of Billy is there. And like yes. it's just so funny to think about like him then at like what, 16, 15, 16, 16 right? I yeah, think. I think it's so. um and then like, you know, where we're at today or or even where we were at in 2004, you know, if yeah. you want to think about like that as the the to and from sort of benchmark. And it's like so much of Billy's uh, mannerisms are already there. I love the, uh, um, I don't. He he does like that someday. Yes, yeah, yes. And, you know, and yeah. that it's like, and it's just like right there, in, and you know, like he has that like Billy Joeism right we even, there. We we even have a wow, but yes. kind of in a you know like <laughs> sillier you know preteen way. It's it's uh yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He he's uh 
he his identity is is loud and clear i mean um yeah i don't think you couldn't mistake couldn't mistake him for himself right away um, no and i know some people i you know i don't know if this is common but like you know there i have definitely known people throughout my life where I'll be like, yeah, man, like, Green Day is my favorite band. And they'll be like, really? Green Day? Like, I fucking hate the way Billy sounds. You know, like, he's, like, fucking nasally and this and that. And it's like, I I feel like there's always, there's always this feeling where I'm like, on the one hand, like, I almost have to give it to him. Like, I can understand what it would be like to listen to Billy Joe and be like, yeah, it's not for me. Because he's a very singular kind of singer and songwriter, you know? Um, For as much as I love Billy Joe, and I love him to death, I think he's incredible. You know, it's like you get to see, like, a fucking master at work. You know, for real. Um, but, But I think when you're, like, so singularly good at something, it it also inevitably means that... um, there are going to be people who do not like that singular thing, right? Like there, there will be opposition to that. And, um, I think that the tone of his voice and especially like the, the undulations, like, why did you have to leave so soon? You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I can't do it, but like, you know what I'm trying to get across mm. here, right? You know, and those things that when I hear them, I'm like, I'm like fucking clued in. I'm like, yeah, this is this is nostalgia for me, you know? Like this this these things are exactly the things that I equate to Green Day being good. Can like at the same time, if you're coming to them like without having like developed alongside of like this, you know? It's like what the fuck is this, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I am not here to make the other side of the argument. I, I wanted to be clear that I disagree completely, and I think Billy's fucking incredible, and I love Green Day to death. That's why we are here to talk about them. But it's kind of funny to think that I, I think that you can be so good at something, something so specific, that it necessitates other people just, like, fucking hating your guts. You know what I mean? 100%. And I, I think that, like, the way that, like, the way that Billy presents himself is like part of that. Like you can't separate those things. That's what it makes me think of. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I think anything that is so like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and say, you know, uh, green day came on the scene and, and they're doing something that no one has ever done ever before something total, but it's not even that it's it's that they they are doing something in such a unique way that only they yeah. could do that it becomes well you know like like you said it's it's so um it's it's one of a kind right it's it it doesn't exist anywhere else um and yeah it's it's maybe maybe not not like something you know you have heard in a way that maybe doesn't doesn't tickle your fancy. Um, so, so yeah, like, and I mean, I, you know, all of the, the 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 great singers of of rock and roll do have this problem because they sound like themselves. You know, like not liking somebody's voice or just vibe or or whatever. Right. You know, the aura of you as like a rock star or a front person you know, does turn people off. Like the same can be said for obviously Tom DeLonge is a huge one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Gerard Way, Rivers Cuomo, like all of these guys, you know, you're, you're not going to mistake them for anybody else. And um, yeah. And, and, and that comes with, with, with a lot of people who, who dislike, um, they either dislike that fact or just the, the thing that only you singularly can do is, 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 yeah. is not what they want. Um, and I, I think that goes back to the whole, like, oh, you know, is Green Day punk enough? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, they've always stuck to their guns. They've always made the music that they want to make. You know, I think, if you know, I, I remember... I know this is this is not at the library. I don't mean to get ahead of ourselves, but it, it feels like it's relevant to like this part of the discussion. It's okay. Like, we can we're we're not gonna ban talk of other songs. I know, I know. But but like I think that you and I probably both have a memory. I do have a memory of the first time I listened to this. Anyways, um <clears throat> 
I remember we encountered Green Day's cover of Knowledge first, and we definitely just assumed that that was their song. And then at some point, you come across this information like, oh no, Knowledge is a cover, right? Uh -huh. Knowledge is a cover of an Operation Ivy song. Yeah. And then... I do, I remember listening to Knowledge by Operation Ivy for the first time, and I remember it was on YouTube, so there wow. must have been something there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember my imme immediate thought is like, I don't like this. What the <laughs> fuck is this? This isn't my knowledge. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and... And I want to mention it just because, like, I, I think when we're talking about, like, oh, what's the scene that Green Day's coming up in when they're making this? Like, you can't just say that every other band was like Operation Ivy was singing like that, you know? But, but I, I think the expectation was more to have that, you know, not off-putting sound, but, like, you need to be gruffer. You yeah. need to sound sicker. Yep. You need to be more aggressive, you know? And Green Day was against that. They're like, we can do these things in the punk scene and we can do it melodically. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. we, we can do it with with like, you know, this more clear uh, kind of singing. And, and right, it's like they aren't the ones to necessarily like pioneer this or they're not the only ones to do it. They're the ones who blew up doing it. Yes. That's why we're having this conversation, right? Exactly, yep. Um, but, but thinking about that and applying it to at the library, uh, you know, yeah, like Billy's, Billy's singing is great. Um, I really love it. And, and it goes through, you know, a few ebbs and flows because like, yeah, you get like the, the, wah, you know, you get the, the, the crazier bits. And then like, they even have that, like that little bridge after the solo where things are like a little more pulled back, you know, like the things, things slow down a bit more yeah and um there's there's a lot of uh there's kind of like an arc to the song and yes. like his singing sort of follows that too yeah definitely and you know it's there, there's a lot of dynamics within the song you know from i mean just different parts that kind of coalesce together in in you know already skillful ways like the, the the structure of the song already feels like locked down like that's the thing they know that they know how to do you know um which is crazy to me as as a songwriter you know because mm -hmm. i've kind of always felt like the, the first album for bands and i think of like mcr and the used as the two examples that come to my mind right away um the the first album of a band and, and this is why a lot of times people like love the first album and then kind of drop off um mm -hmm. afterwards just because like that's a lot of the time an album of people learning how to write songs for the first time. Um, obviously not always, but a lot of those albums like really feel like they're like, they're figuring out like how to structure a song, um, what works, what doesn't work. And so like, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a break from um, that, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus structure. Um, not because they're trying to be clever, but because they don't know yet. Um, right. and I think that's, that's kind of what makes first albums like special a lot of the time. Um, and also like when they learn how to write songs, people drop off cause it's like not as unique as it was. And obviously there's not a right or wrong way to write a song, but whatever they come up with is a lot of the times more typical, I guess. And, um, it, I think this, this is kind of an aberration and, and, uh, you know, I I feel like they they know how to write a tight pop rock song like already like right out the gate. Um, and obviously, you know, they've been. I think this point, Mike and Billy had been playing together for quite a while, so it's not like they didn't have the time to like hone hone their craft a little bit. But um, but I still think it's cool that it's like, bam, right away. This is like a competent song, like well well written. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Like, it's like, and and we've said that a few times now. It's like, yeah, everything's there. But, um, yeah, it doesn't, for for as much as how we have also focused on, like, hey, here, here's the differences. Like, here's here's what's different about Billy's guitar playing and this and that. Like, um, the, the core of what they're doing is, like, still, you know, pretty strong and, and sturdy and in line with, like, what they're going to, follow up with too yeah 
Yeah. Um, I would say so. Yeah. I, I, um, and you know, I think a lot of it is, it's like, I don't know, something Billy, Billy really had a crack at, you know, when, when he, he was very young. So yeah, by the time he's like 16, 17, he's, he can write a fucking pop song. Um, (laughs) and, uh, yeah. So, so I think it would be cool to kind of like run, run through, um, some more of the, these elements. We talked about the guitar a lot. Um, I mean, it's it's funny because like you know, also right away, and this is going to be like a uh, broken record. We say, oh, right away, they already have this, they already have that. <laughs> but, <laughs> let's let's do it, whatever yeah, you know. But, it's our podcast. Who cares? But Mike's bass is already there too. Like it's already, yeah, it's already so good. The the the, the interplay between him and Billy is like they're they're locked in already. Um, and combined with it with Mike's harmonies, it's like ah man. I mean. He's all he's already so good. Yeah. No, they they have a, like a natural musicality about them and it's like I don't know. I get it. You know, you have a few drinks, you're on a pod, podcast, you know, it's like I I don't want to say anything too grandiose here, but like, you know, there there are like certain musical partnerships uh throughout time, you know, that it's like, wow, like this has led to great songwriting. And, you know, the first one that's going to come to mind, you know, it's Paul and John, you know, right? Like, and, and I'm not, I'm not here to say that this is analogous, but I mean, like, I, I think that, um, you know, Billy and Mike, they, they push each other to like make something greater than they can do on their own. You know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever, you know, whether it's, you know, deliberate or not, you know, they, when they, when they come together to make a a piece of art, you know, in partnership, like it is, it's something that only they can make together, you know, like there, there is like kind of like the secret sauce of the and like you know okay again like we're saying like hey Trey's not here what about Trey listen yes I mean you need all three parts for Green Day to feel like fully like they've they've formed into you know like the perfect actualization of themselves uh, no offense intended to John Kiffmeyer not what I'm here to say there's no Kiffmeyer slander here but like you know I, I think that that's gonna be like a, when we get to you know Kerplunk. Or, or even like you're saying, like uh, to to the end here towards the EPs, it's like you know that's I'm sure that's going to be part of the discussion. It has to be part of the discussion. But but like scaling it back, it's like yeah, you know, Billy and Mike playing together, you know, is is essential. They just their their relationship is like beyond the music, you know. Yeah, they're just in lockstep with each other. They just know what they're doing, you know. Yeah, one hundred percent. I and, and I think that that really, you know, I think brings me to to the point that I I, I was going to make. Um, yeah, Green like Billy Joe and Mike are the foundation. They're the foundation of Green Day. Um, obviously, you know, we we uh, we have a lot of the basics here. Um, right off the gate but i you know you you brought up john kiffmeyer um aka al sobrante um and yeah i i i wanted to talk about him a little bit um because you know as as much as it is green day right out of the gate um i mean any any green day fan worth their salt you know uh will will press play on this bad boy and be like Trey's not drumming. This is this isn't Trey. <laughs> you know, like this is this is a different drummer. This is not this is not right. Trey Cool. Um, and I mean, obviously, a lot of the people that listen to this already know that this is like the album that Trey's not on. But I, yeah, I do. But, but if if you're just jumping in from like you know if 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 you just listen to to, to Green Day on TikTok and you're yes. coming here, you know, let us let us drop a little bit of knowledge, wink, wink, damn, on you. You know good. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know if. If you're watching the holiday uh, TikTok dance and you're like, damn, I want to make a Green Day TikTok dance. And the first song you pull up is out of the library. <laughs> you're going to be like, what? What? Yeah. Those, Come on. Yeah. Those. Uh, Come on. Those beefy drums are not are they're, they're not the same. Um, yeah. And this is something like, am I just a crazy Green Day fan or is this or is it actually apparent? You know, like if if like you were a Green Day fan and listened to a few albums and then put on 
39 smooth i mean what what would you think do you do you think it's a different drummer the thing is, it's like one of those it's like i don't know anymore you know i can't i can't separate what i know from from my listening but i mean like having said that i did think of, like when i was listening to the song you know a few times today i'm like oh you know probably worth mentioning we got a different drummer here like what feels different about it um you know the thing that 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 i was struck with i i don't even i can't even really go as far as to say it's a a difference but something that i really liked about the drumming um i don't know if this is gonna sound stupid or not but but i was thinking like um i think it's because they have like uh after after like the second chorus it goes into like this solo bit and then like the solo leads into the bridge and like in that transition point at the end of the solo towards the bridge you get like this really cool like cowbell sort of going on there and uh that just felt to me i was like that feels like kind of a kiff my move there like it feels like we're gonna like punctuate that a bit more as we're like doing that transition and um i really dug that but uh but yeah i mean to say like it's like if if you were gonna put like two tracks on back to back like a trey song and a kiff Meyer song like could someone just tell the difference i mean probably not you know probably not i think i only know just because of our history of being lifelong green Day listeners but well the fact is we just know you know we just know and i mean the the thing too is is like you know if if you're somebody that does like listen to a lot of music and like you're into like different drummers and you're like you like like no different styles of drummer you're going to be like this is like a different style this is a, this is you know a different performer um but if you're just like not a total fucking nerd you probably won't right um so uh but that said i i do think it should um be stated that i do think john kiffmeyer was a good drummer for green day um Obviously, there's a whole lot of other reasons he was a good drummer. Like, like he was a good member. He he had like cred in the scene, right? He mm-hmm. he drummed for Isocracy, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. He he was really like the elder statesman yeah. there in the three of them. Like he he was the one who got their foot in the door. I think exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we we have like much to be thankful for uh, from from good old Al Sobrante. Um I, I I do think he's a good you know good drummer. I feel like he his style is. You know, because like Trey is like very tight and very, um, I don't know, very driving and and you know I think beefy, um, yeah, and fun. You know, I feel like John Kiffmeyer's style is a bit more rigid, um, and but not in a bad way. Like like the fills kind of feel like a little bit more stilted, I guess. Um, but but I, I mean I think it all works that you know it sounds good I think it's a it's it's a legitimate style choice I think he's a, probably a very skillful drummer um, but yeah yeah so, it'll be I'll I'll we should try to you know we'll think about that more too like as we go on through this because I I don't know I mean like, I it definitely not something I've given a lot of thought to uh, in my later years so yeah, you know sure. let's 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 try to listen with some fresh ears to. Uh, the Kiffmeyer drums as we go through this album and, yeah. and see what we think. I think that's a great idea. And also, what just struck me is, uh, you know, they just released uh, a recording of 409 in your coffee maker um, that was recorded for Dookie as a potential track on Dookie. And so it's 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 a studio track with Trey drumming on 409 in your coffee maker. So I think it would be fun. Maybe we get to that song. We can compare the two versions. Okay. With the two yes. different drummers. Uh, I think that would be fun. We're we're a ways away. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you, Mister Kiffmeyer. <laughs> uh, uh, is there anything like particular about the song you wanted to to shout out, or or any other thoughts you had regarding at the library? You know, you know what was funny. I wanted to mention, and and this is gonna come up, it, probably maybe with like each. I swear to God, with each song off this album, um, I sort of have a bit of an admission to make something that. Something that I think that, like, in your heart, you probably know, but, like, you might not, you might not always think about and reflect on as much. But, um, I, I'm pretty damn certain that you, Connor, know every Green Day lyric on every song 
front to back. I think you know them all. I really do. Uh, I think that's like your fucking superpower. Yeah, I, I mean, think I'm, you I'm pretty close know though. each one. And um, I am. I have had many, many years, you know, to be pretty damn close to you. But something that's going to be fun about going through this in a way is like, you know, my my straight up admission is I don't. There's there's just some shit that, you know, every now and then you're singing along to a Green Day song and you either, you know, you just say whatever the fuck you think it is or, you know, you, you, you just don't know, you know. Um, I did not know the line in this song where Billy says, my chance is looking a bit gray. That's the line I didn't know in the song. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think he was saying? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, I really am not sure. Um, but that whole, like I had, I had the lead up there, right? Try to for, find the words I could use. Don't have the courage to come up to you. Like he's, that's very clear to me. Like I like, that's like all there, but then my chance is looking a bit gray. I, I really, before this podcast, if you were like, Connor, what do you think he says? I'd be, I don't know. I really don't. I don't care. I'd take a fucking guess. I don't know. Gun to my head. Connor, I do. I did not know. Yeah. So yeah. it's cool to go through this. And I, I, I just think for posterity's sake, uh, I, I just wanted to mention like, that's something that I learned today. So And hey. something that surely I've come across, you know, like we've, you know, all looked up the lyrics to these songs but it doesn't mean you remember it every time listening that's, back to this song yeah. i did not know that's exactly it like i'm you know going through these songs really fun because while i think there definitely was a time in my life where i did know all the lyrics to every green day song and while i still think that the vast majority i do know all of them um I, I'm not going to be surprised if there are one or two where there's like little things that I, I thought were different or I didn't remember. Um, I think that will be rare, but I do think it will probably happen. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's intriguing. Yeah, yeah. So and, we'll and, I, and I think that on every song off of this record, there's going to be at least one line where I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tell you at the end, like I, I just didn't fucking know. Because um, when I was saying before, like, oh, hey, 39 Smooth, it's not a blind spot, but I, you know, it feels like it's like definitely the album I'm least sure of in Green Day's discography. Some of that is just feeling like I know I don't know all the lines. And so yeah. like it's cool going through the podcast here you know, as I'm listening to the songs, I'm I'm looking, I'm following along with the lyrics too, which you know I'm not going to do every time I throw the album on, and I'm like, hey, you know, shit, you know, that that's that's what he says. That's cool. Yeah, so, it's uh, always fun. That's it's always fun. fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, it's like more fun when you're just getting into the band. Like that's another thing we can talk about. Is I don't know, sitting down and reading the lyrics for the first time. It's always oh my it's god, always Dude, a thrill. And, you want to talk about like something that's different now? Where are the lyric booklets? They're gone, motherfucker. I know. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, even on for bands that still produce CDs, a lot of it it's just the insert. They just have that the insert and and the lyric booklet is gone. I I am of the opinion that um, I think bands on Bandcamp could charge more if they included PDFs of their lyrics, like a like a full done up lyric booklet but in pdf form i think people would pay i think that would be popular i think people would like that um and green day had some great lyric booklets i mean yes. like i don't know if i can remember 39 smooths off the top of my head but i remember kerplunk certainly and like everything felt like it was you know it was it was done up so it looked like it was like handwritten scribbled in a notebook you get yes. the little doodles in there like it really felt like someone you know like yeah you know talk about like oh every you know billy's like pining you get this feeling of like unrequited love you know and the and the lyric booklet you know at least at the very beginning for green day it kind of feels like you found like some fucking dork's diary you know and they're just exactly. like talking about you know this fucking girl or or girl is you know that that you know they they want to approach and they just fucking can't you know yeah they're, it, it really they're enhances, too fucking stupid yeah it, it definitely enhances the um the the album as a whole and the song's by themselves um just like connects you to the art on a on on a stronger level i guess yeah um, 
something I, uh, I you know, I wanted to bring up a little bit of uh, trivia. I think I think it'll be be cool to close the show with a little bit of Green Day trivia. Let's do it. I love it. Um, this song, and this is something that I think I I knew but never really paid attention to because it's like just a very, I don't know, strange and in minor. But this song originally was called "At the Library with Waba Sewaska." When when I looked up the lyrics before it too, I came across that because yeah. I saw that on Wikipedia and I was like, uh, "Why? <laughs> yeah, I know, why? Right?" And and I and I you know I have seen it like from time to time and just like not ever looked into why or thought about why what that is whatever. Um, and it, it you know I, I did a little bit of digging, not a lot, but it doesn't seem like many people know what that even means or what that is. But it was. The, the title was by John Kiff Meyer. I think that's one of John John Kiff Meyer, who named himself Al Bronte. I think that's kind of yes. his thing, like weird names maybe. Um, but somebody, and I don't know how how valid this source is, but uh, somebody says, and this is the only thing I could find on it, um, is that Wabase Waska is is a name that um, that somebody from from the scene. Or, or no, sorry. Um, it's something a girl would would uh, say to him every time he went to the library. So I don't know. Um, I don't know how how true or or fake that is, but it's a fun little bit of uh, trivia. You know, I'll uh, I'll I'll take that into consideration. I'm just gonna assume it's true until you know. Hey, maybe someone will reach out to us at Green Dudes pod or whatever the fuck it is at a twitter i mean you'll probably say uh yes, if we uh, have yeah. i don't even know please but 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 if someone knows yes you know you should tell us because you know we are green day you know i i maybe we were a little bit coy on the beginning of the episode but i, I mean we're green day fanatics maybe some people would call us fanboys i don't know um, super fans super fans take your pick yeah take your pick we'll we'll we will um admit to it you know um but there there might even be blind spots for us so uh if you have corrections or or thoughts you think that we didn't cover that we should have yeah definitely hit us up i think uh um this this brings us to to a good quitting point connor is there anything you want to uh mention before we we call it a night no i'm i'm happy with what we discussed it's kind of funny because it feels like so much of our conversation around this song is, is kind of like revolving around it as the inception point. Like I, at the end of our discussion, I'm like, did we talk about the song enough? But like at the end of the day, I feel like the song is kind of representative of so many other things that are going to be ongoing discussions throughout the podcast yes. that like, you know, it's kind of all there. I, yep. I think that we've said our piece and it it's a really great place to start because I think there's just so much more to say, and uh, we're going to continue that as we go on through their discography. Hell yeah, you're 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 on the money with that one. Um, and the, the you know another thing I want to stress is that the conversations are going to be ongoing. You know, like we're not going to put a cap on out the library, not talk about it. Um, we can bring it up in the future whenever, and we certainly will. Um, but we're gonna, just going to go deeper and deeper into um, Green Day's history and our history with the band that at times might be embarrassing for us but you know who cares we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna tell that's the world. That, that's the whole point you know whole, yeah exactly that that's, <laughs> that's the entire point uh, but if you if you want to uh, reach out to us please follow us on twitter at uh, green dudes pod um you can email uh us at corrupted tv productions at gmail.com if you have any thoughts fan mail or um yeah, any Green Day thoughts that you want to share with us? We might share them on the if, show. If, if you know what's up with Wabase Waska, then yes, just, you know, please, please. shout if, it out, please. If, if you're a Wabase Waska truther, please, <laughs> please contact us. <laughs> please. They're out there. They're out there. Um, and uh, next week, we will have Don't Leave Me. So get ready for it, folks. All right. See ya. Wait, I gotta end the I gotta end the recording, not our video call. Right. All right. See ya. But the, but it's over, right? You did it. Um, it's over right now. <laughs>